Hi and welcome to day 19. I want to conduct an experiment today. Let's see if we can prove or disprove the possibility of telepathy. So here's what we'll do. I won't say anything. I will just sit here quietly and you try to guess what I'm going to talk about today. Yeah, let's give it a shot. I'll close my eyes so that, yeah, try and read my mind. You getting anything? Yes. Yes, it's related to travel. Yes, I am going to talk about Paris. Wow, this proves to all the doubters out there that telepathy is real. We have just proved it. Just take this video and use it everywhere you need. So I am going to talk about Paris. Uh, specifically, I'm going to talk about my first day in Paris. And actually, I'm going to talk about the first part of my first day in Paris because when I started looking at the uh, material that I have for this, I have quite a lot of good uh, videos and pictures to show you. The first day itself in Paris was so interesting and eventful that I think it will be it will be worth doing two videos on it rather than just one. So uh, first let me start by telling you about the plan that I did not take when I did not go to Paris and this was way back in 2006 uh, when I used to work in Frankfurt. Well, I was working in Frankfurt temporarily on a little project called FIFA, the FIFA Weltmeisterschaft, which means the World Cup. Uh, and um, my colleagues who were also there with me, they wanted to go on a weekend to Paris. And uh, oh, hi Onkar, hi Deepthi, I hope you guys still remember me. Uh, and I had gone with these people already to Amsterdam once for a whole one day trip uh, and they were cool people so that was not the problem but I didn't want to go to Paris just for like a day or for, for a weekend because uh, in my head I wanted to go to Paris properly. What it properly was, I had no idea at the time. Uh, but I kind of thought that if I went there just for the day and we will just be standing in lines for most of the time uh, and then maybe see one or two things and come back. Um, and it could be true. Uh, and we didn't need a visa there because we were on the Schengen visa to uh, Germany anyway. So uh, that was the plan. They went, I didn't go. And then finally, after 12 years, I did actually got to go to Paris properly and properly in this case meant that I had a British passport so I did not need visa at all Schengen or otherwise yes don't talk to me about Brexit uh, and I had enough money to go and live in a four-star hotel for six days I had a camera knew a little bit about photography I could do some videos so I did go properly this time and I was so excited about it that as soon as I got my citizenship uh, as soon as I got this certificate of citizenship, I didn't even wait for my passport. I just booked a trip to Paris right away. My passport arrived before I, before I traveled. Uh, and because Paris, going to Paris is an exciting thing in itself, but what can be better? It can be better to go on a train. Yep. So taking the Eurostar had been a dream of mine for a while. So I took the train from here to London, which is about almost two hours train journey. Uh, and then from there, from St. Pancras to the Eurostar. So exciting to go through the tunnel, but uh, you don't actually get to see the tunnel. There is nothing to indicate that you are now entering the tunnel that goes under the sea. Nothing like that. Uh, but still, it was quite a nice journey, quite nice, interesting journey. And uh, I had a hotel in the Latin Quarter. Uh, it was called Hotel Grand. Uh, in the Latin Quarter is Hotel Grand San Miguel. And so my plan was to get there on a Friday, 31st of August, so that I can be there, settle down, and then in the morning, just take my backpack, the camera bag, and then go and take a picture of the Eiffel Tower. So I don't know if you know this or not, but the Eiffel Tower is quite a tall structure. I'm sure you know that much. But um, in order to take a good picture of it where you can have the whole tower in the same frame, uh, you need to be slightly further away from it and there is a place called Place du Trocadero which is a monument right across the river from the Eiffel Tower. So that is far enough and close enough that you get a really good frame uh, for the Eiffel Tower and because the place, the Place du Trocadero, has uh, nice, uh, nice floors itself so 
if you do a low angle shot it looks really really lovely as you would see in the pictures here i got all this information about plaza do tracadero from the internet and people said that uh, if you want to take a good picture of the Eiffel Tower, you get off the subway one stop before at Plaza Tracadero and take the picture from there. Like, all good. So I plan to get up at six o'clock next morning and then be out the door by 6.30 and then you can get there by seven o'clock. If you have uh, ever chased the sunrise as a photographer, you would know that you need to be there earlier than the time it says on the internet when the sun is going to be up because sunrise time is actually when the sun is going to be up over the horizon and you will miss all the lovely color that you can get before, just before sunrise. Uh, so I set up an alarm for 5 o'clock in the morning, one for 5.30 in the morning and one for 6 o'clock because I knew travel makes me sleepy uh, and I might not get up with just one alarm. But unfortunately none of those alarms woke me up. I woke up at 6.40 and I thought with a panic, oh my god this is Bangkok all over again. Do you remember Bangkok? So. Uh, and it's 6.40 which means I have no time to go, no time to take shower, no time to get to the subway station and go to the um, Plaza do Tracadero. I was like in the throes of a dilemma. Um, I had the whole day, I could get up and get ready and then go there later on or I could go next day to do the uh, sunrise photo. But I knew I had tickets for the lift at Eiffel Tower next day. And I knew that if I didn't do this now, I would actually end up going to the Eiffel Tower at some point in the day anyway, because, you know, like a moth to the flame, I was going to get there. Um, and have you ever, I'm sure you were, you were a child once, and I'm sure when you might remember that feeling when you, uh, you want something, you want something so bad, you can taste it. And if your parents say that, oh, you can't have the money for that, or you can't have that, it's like, oh... I felt that frustration. So ultimately, I came upon an idea, which was a very unhygienic idea. I didn't take a shower, didn't brush my teeth. I simply called an Uber. Uh, I didn't know they had an Uber. I checked only on there and then yes, they had Uber there. So I called an Uber and just took time enough to pull my pants on and I had already decided what t-shirt I was gonna wear in the morning. And I had packed my camera bag the night before, so everything was ready in the camera bag. So, um, and the Uber took five minutes, so in that time I was downstairs. Perfect timing, like we could drop a bank with that kind of precision. And when I was in the cab, going towards the Eiffel Tower, and I was so excited. That's the whole reason I am telling you this, the whole reason I'm doing this episode. I have not felt that kind of excitement for a long time before that. I can't even remember when I felt that excited before or since, have not had that since. Uh, that was last year, September. Um, but at any moment, I was like looking out the window the whole time like a dog in the car back seat and looking out any moment, I'm gonna see a glimpse of Eiffel Tower. I never not see the full bars, any glimpse, anytime, anytime now. And that was so exciting and I did see it uh, and I did get there. So when I got down there and let me show you that video, this is the Plaza do Tracadero. And if you wait enough, you will see where the Eiffel Tower is in relation to the Plaza do Tracadero. Okay. So you can see that this is like exactly right opposite that across the river. Um, the one thing that I didn't know was that I was not the only one who knew this secret. There were at least a hundred people, I kid you not. There were at least a hundred people there at that time in the morning before the sun was up to take pictures. There was even a girl um, in a wedding gown, in a white wedding gown uh, with a professional photographer and of course her bridegroom. Um, I found out later, my friend Anna, do you remember Anna, the photographer? Uh, she takes a lot of good pictures of um, uh, flowers and things like that. She does lots of good macro photography. I'll try and get her to talk about macro photography at some point, but she doesn't want to vlog. Uh, we'll see. So she told me later that these are people who are uh, very much into Instagram, who have a very strong Instagram presence and then they create these sets of photos uh, for their Instagram stories. 
uh, I don't know whether this is a real wedding or not or whether they had the wedding or whatever but that was the idea and not just that there were lots of other people as well so taking pictures and I felt like a new kid in the college so I'm just walking in and everybody's already established there they've got tripods the flash the reflectors everything I'm like oh my god so ultimately I, I, I kind of uh, got over my nervousness in being uh, you know new there but nobody was territorial with me anyway so if um, I set up my camera tripod right next to somebody else who was doing a photo shoot with his girlfriend um, and I took some nice pictures so let me show you those pictures and it was absolutely worth all the trouble all the hassle and the 12 year wait to get those pictures. I'm not, a, uh, I'm not a really great photographer or anything, but I'm reasonable. Uh, and most times I can fix up the photos in Photoshop and have them reasonably good so that they are shareable. But it was this place that I could take the photo right from the camera and post it anywhere and it was a great photo. So that was the beauty of the Eiffel Tower. If I had been a vlogger at that time, I would have uh, recorded a journey from the hotel to the Eiffel Tower, but I was not a vlogger at the time. I was not a technically, practically a real vlogger at the time, but I was always a vlogger in spring. Let me prove to you that I was always a vlogger waiting to happen. Okay, watch these two video clips and then you will know. Good morning, it's me again. Uh, this is a special edition I was explaining earlier when I was rudely interrupted by some water. I'll show you the water as well in a second. <clears throat> so, why is this, this edition so special? Because it has a quiz. The quiz is a very simple quiz. It has one question and it, I will give you one clue to answer that. All right. Question is... Where am I? Here we go. That's your clue. That's the only clue you will get from me. I know it's a small clue, but well, make the best of it. Try and guess where I am. And I'm back. So, Nobody has guessed so far where I am. I will give you the clue again. That's the clue. That's your clue. Ah, oh, it doesn't look like anybody's going to know. Okay. Oh, all these pigeons. Uh, so this is a place called Plas do Trocadero. And apparently this is the place to come to if you want to take a clear shot of the Eiffel Tower. And you would be surprised that quite a few people know this secret. I didn't know that anybody knew. I thought I would be the only one here. But you can find more dressed up women here at 7 a.m. than probably anywhere else in the world. More than you would find a wedding reception, to be honest. Because for some reason, people seem to think that this is a nice location to take pictures with their girlfriends and wives. I wonder what they do when they get divorced. Oops, sorry, shouldn't think like that. Should not think like that while I'm in Paris. Oops, I gave it away. Anyway, <clears throat> so there's your shot of the Eiffel Tower. And here's the actual place where I am. This is Place de Trocadero. It's a uh, quite a sight in itself. I don't know if there's a museum or not, but there are quite a few uh, statues around. Huh? Huh? See? I was always a vlogger. I just didn't know what a vlog was. Uh, I had gone to Paris with the intention of taking a lot of photographs and also to do a lot of videos and then create some uh, documentaries with that. But with that kind of project, it's always, always like, I want to do it very seriously, I want to do it very perfectly, and then that keeps getting delayed and delayed. With the vlog, so much easier. So you will see much more footage from Paris as part of the vlog uh, going forward as well. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll probably talk about my hair. We'll see. Bye.